Hey guys, welcome back to the Tipsy Ghost. We're your tipsy hosts, Sarah, Sarah, and Lindsay. Hey guys. Hey guys. I hate that you did that. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you noticed. Which are you going to say hi there? Hi. <laughs> so um, they have been making fun of me because I say guys a lot. I'm like, hey guys, thanks so much, guys. Guys, well, right, here's guys, the we'll thing. catch you next week. Hey guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. It's endearing, Lindsay. It's <laughs> precious. <laughs> So apparently I say guys a lot. I'm so sorry. I've noticed for a while, but I didn't want to say anything. And then I finally said something. And now here we are. Lindsay's paranoid about this it. Is, like, I was even telling my husband earlier today that when I was talking with a patient, I called him Bud. And he's like, you called another like patient <laughs> Bud? I'm like, yes, I called him Bud, friend. <laughs> like, I do friend weird? a lot. Like, okay, friend, let's do this. Or yeah. I'm like, hey, Bud. My name's Lindsay. Yeah. And honestly, like, I feel like most people respond to that. There's a very select few who are like, yes. no, call me sir. Call me by my I'm name. I'm not going to do that to like. Call me by my name. Yeah, I've never heard that <laughs> one. Some patients. Pull my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Some patients, I'm That's not like going to do that. But term. like, I was like, if they're an older elderly mm-hmm. woman, I'm going to call them honey. Like, if they're like a younger, like teenager, I call them honey. But like, I do, if it's a guy, love, it's bud. Like, all right, love, let's do this. And I was like, well, and I, I thought about it one day. I was like, that's totally not me. <laughs> My term of endearment with honey normally comes out when I'm being like empathetic with them and they're yeah. like crying about something or whatever. And I'm like, I know, honey. Like, so your honey, term of I know. endearment for podcasting is guys. Is guys. It's cute because you just try to include everybody who's listening because you're like, so guys, this is what we're, this is what Sarah's doing with her hands. Listen. She's motioning here. <laughs> I just uh, feel like, explain it. <laughs> I feel like that's like a friendly thing. Like if it I'm is. calling you guys, like yeah. it's like, hey friends, hey guys. You're not wrong, but it's. <laughs> Devil's cute. advocate, well, not no. everybody identifies as a guy. I know, and I mean it all inclusive. Like it's so yeah, my husband say, people. My hey, husband peeps. called me dude. Like when we were friends before we started dating, he called everybody dude, guy or girl. So I would like for the longest time didn't think he liked me because he kept calling me dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's where my guys comes from. Like it's just all inclusive. Everybody is you're my guy. I hey, get what guys. you're trying to do. It's fun. <laughs> it's just part of it now. Hey guys. Where are we going tonight? <laughs> we did a return visit. We decided to return bring this. Up next. We Once decided- again. Okay. Here we are. We just decided to bring this full circle. Oh my God. Two years <laughs> later. From our first meeting, our first gathering. Started from the first bottom. Date. Now we're here. We, that's- it was a blind date. Actually, it was. I, yeah. I set you guys up. Yes, you did. We went back to the freaking Sally house, y'all. Oh my god! Bow, bow, bow. Bow, bow, bow. Atchison, pew. Kansas. Pew pew. <laughs> so, if you remember, if you've been listening from the beginning, Boydston set me and Sarah up and was like, "Listen, we're all going to Sally house." Um, I set us three up. It was yes. a triple date. Before things got bad, October <laughs> 2019, I met Sarah. We drove to Atchison, and I was like, "This is it." <laughs> these are my people these are my people i had never hung out with boydson outside of work before mm-hmm. turns out um, i'm a lot of fun outside of work yes. yeah <laughs> i was so nervous because i was like oh my gosh what if like we have nothing to talk about outside of work knowing you what? now i'm really appreciative that you didn't back out oh wow. thank you i think <laughs> are you saying that i'm a flake you can- uh, well, I mean, there was a lot of pressure, of. I feel like, in this scenario. So, yeah. I was for not invited up. by somebody that I only knew through work, like, only for yeah. a year. Like, we didn't work that closely together. Never had met you. So, it was like, uh, You must have been thinking to yourself, Boyston is obviously really cool. And this person <laughs> that she is going to introduce me to must be She really told cool. me. She said, Sarah <laughs> is just like you. <laughs> it turns out she's right. Yes. It turns out <laughs> that we are very similar. So... Moral of the story from that is, on our drive to Atchison is where this podcast was born. Yes, very true. Yep. We birthed we it right out oh of our... God. Stop. Nope. No. Our car. No. <laughs> it was Sarah's car. Right out of Sarah's yeah. car. I gave Lindsay anxiety the, In the whole way. Seat. Yes. <laughs> Driving. It was a little messy, but... I it was. still wanted to hang out with Sarah even after seeing her hardcore come out oh, man. around the basement. <laughs> I forgot about that. You know what? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. No, it's I'm okay. not. I, I know you're not. not. I think I'm we're going to talk about this a little yes, later. So yes. we'll come Why back. don't you tell us about Sally House? Yes. So for those of you who do not know, we obviously went to Sally House before. That is episode eight of the Tipsy Ghost. It was one of it was our first location, but it's one of our first episodes we released. Right. So if you really want like an in-depth history about this place. Listen to episode eight. Yeah, we're Boydston gonna go, covers a lot of it yeah, there. We're going to go more into detail there. But quick history. 
Sally House, if you're in the world of ghost hunting, you know what Sally House is. Yeah. I mean, it's a no-brainer. It's very famous. BuzzFeed Unsolved has been there. Shane and Ryan have been there. Twice. Zach has been there with Ghost Adventures. Yes. Pretty much every, like, ghost investigation TV show has been to this tiny house in Atchison, which is a small town in Kansas. Yeah. And amateur ghost hunters like us, they we love all it. go there. I mean, you have to go. We are professional. I'm so sorry. <laughs> let, me, let me repeat that. <laughs> professional ghost hunters like ourselves. <laughs> So this house at, you know, it's over 100 years old. When it was first functioning, it was a physician's office. Back in that time, physicians kind of operated out of houses, not really like huge hospitals or anything like that. So it was office space. They had examinations rooms. The story behind Sally House is that a doctor was there. His family lived upstairs on the second floor. And one day, a woman arrived with her six-year-old daughter, Sally. And Sally had severe abdominal pain. We think now it was probably appendicitis. Um, The doctor was trying to do emergency surgery. And unfortunately, Sally died on the operating table. That's the story behind it. Is it true? Is it not? We're not really sure. There's not a lot of... Yeah, there's like different takes on it. Yes. Did Sally live there? Did the doctor live there? We're not sure. Right. That's the legend behind Sally House. That's why it's called Sally House. It was privately owned for a long time, and the people who lived there had tons of paranormal experiences to the point that they moved out, Mm -hmm. and now they just basically let people come in and investigate. Mm -hmm. So when we went there in October 2019, it was a public ghost hunt. We were late. Please tell them why. (laughs) Because the bridge was closed. (laughs) Makes it sound like you have to cross a bridge to get into Atchison, and the bridge was closed. From Kansas City to Atchison, there are two ways to get there. The main way... The bridge was closed. It is like literally the bridge into Atchison. So you have to turn back, go yeah, all so you get the way around. All the know. way, all the way to like yes. a mile outside of Atchison. Yes. Oh my gosh. And then it we was realized, horrible. oh, the bridge. So then we try to call them and we're like messaging these people. Nobody answered. It set the tone. Um, and so. <laughs> yes, it did. It is a very small house. I mm-hmm. will say that. I yeah. mean, this is an old house in small town, Kansas. Kansas right. So. When you have a public ghost hunt, that was one of our things with it. Like, we had a ton of fun. Don't get me wrong. But there was a lot of people there. And it's hard to gather evidence when you can hear everything in that house. Yeah. Now that we've been back, I seriously, I I don't know how we dealt with, like, what, 30 people in this house? There was Mm -hmm. a lot of people. This time we got to do a private. So it was different. Much better. Yep. Private overnight. We got to sleep. We had the place to ourselves. Only downside was the basement was closed this time. Very true. Which was our favorite <laughs> location the last time we were here. It okay, was. so when we went in the first time, like Lindsay mentioned, we were late. Um, so they split us up into different groups, which was unfortunate. Three separate groups. I like, know. And I barely knew Sarah, but I still wanted to be <laughs> with her. <laughs> and so I walk up and I'm like tiptoeing into the middle of this like weird field of people in the kids' room. And they're I already know. like – yeah. Yeah, and you guys go to a different. I you go, go to straight the guest into room. the circle of trust, and I went straight oh, into the basement. Right, and this was my very first time ever ghost hunting. Oh gosh, yeah. So you, were you like, guys had been a couple times, but like they're like you're going into the basement where there's a pentagram. I'm like I've never done this before. Like, what am I <laughs> Little doing? Did we know Lindsay was a skeptic at the time. I know. She, I mean, she yeah, still I did not believe, she was no. even more of a skeptic. I did not believe in then. any of it. So yeah, we get split up into these different groups, and my group um, either had already been to the basement or. Weren't going. I'm not sure. But we <laughs> didn't make it down there. Sarah just wanted to go to the basement. And obviously, if you know about Sally House, you want to go to the basement. Am I wrong? It's the most haunted place. So you it is an unfinished. We'll kind of go over like the layout of the house. But the basement is an unfinished cement walls. Totally creepy. Cement floor. Kind of like what you would imagine. Right. There is a pentagram that is spray painted into the floor. Yes. And it's got a, an open area, like a crawl space, but yeah, like right. an open under the house area. Yeah. And when we were down there, because we didn't get to go down there again, because like I said, it's closed now. Did but they the say first why? Time. Safety for reasons. Safety, safety reasons. reasons. So yeah. we don't know. It could be because of flooding. It could be for a lot of Which reasons. Which I get, because I mean, yeah. it, it's an old house. It's an old house. It's unfinished. Yeah. The so, stairs are kind of sketchy. I get it. Yes. And it's a small area. So we had a lot of experience down there the first time. You guys want to kind of talk about that since we... Just yeah. briefly. Since we didn't get to go down again. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting to know what the backstory of... Sarah and I had only been t- hung out once mm-hmm. at a ghost hunt. Lindsay is a f- this is the first interaction I'm with a Sarah, newbie. Yeah, you are. and 
we're all sitting, just the three of us in the basement. And Sarah's like, I see people under the stairs. Like, people are peeking out at me. A and big, I, yeah, a young boy. I wanted to hang and out with you guys I again. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> boy, I remember this. I was like, this is the coolest moment of my life. I am with the coolest person. She can see things. Oh my gosh, stop. And then I was wondering what Lindsay was thinking. I didn't know she was a skeptic at the time. Uh, so we her i heard things with my own ears mm-hmm. sarah was seeing things i felt something touch or holding hold your hand. my mm-hmm. hand and sarah's holding my hand yes. freaking out <laughs> yes it was an intense experience I, we've since then we've been to a lot of different places and this still stands out as one of the most like Definitely. significant experiences that we've had we've it's caught a- probably the most photographic evidence i totally agree it's said to be a portal to hell yeah. and when i took pictures of this little under the house crawl space, space mm-hmm. it looks like flames mm-hmm. are just coming up and okay. then the mm-hmm. coolest thing is we get this shadow figure Person. with a yep. hat with yep. like a cowboy hat yep it sure did with there was one on a picture without him yes and then the next picture there he is yeah and it is big and it is looming and we also caught a very creepy evp or a growl yep down there and we actually heard it with our own ears and you can hear us on the recording but it had quite the impression <laughs> on us yes the basement did so We've been wanting, obviously, to go back to Sally House for a long time and do a private because that was our biggest Mm -hmm. complaint was there were so many people we couldn't get a lot of evidence other than the basement. Right. And we've known the basement has been closed for a long time, but... And that's why we've been avoiding it. We've been avoiding it, but honestly, like, it popped up. It was available. We needed a last-minute ghost hunt because ours canceled. Yeah. And we were like, let's go. Of course. uh, Basement or not, let's go. Perfect. Yeah. So I will say, though, that I found out that the most recent time that we were there... That one of the ladies that lived there had fallen down the stairs to the basement yes. and passed away. They have that on the fridge. They're yes. like, some people think this is the spirit of Sally or a little girl, but others right. know that this lady fell to her death down these stairs and no they think idea. That the spirit is her. Yeah, and that I, was the first time I had heard about that. Layout of the house, kind of. So the kitchen is near the back of the house, and the stairs to the basement is in the kitchen. And in the kitchen is a table that's kind of dedicated to Sally. It's got a psychic's drawing or rendition of what Sally looks like, along with some old medical tools. I think it's Tony's drawing. Tony Pickman. I think is it's it? his yes, okay. drawing of Sally. Yeah. What he saw. Exactly. Yeah. So kitchen's connected to a dining room and living room, which is kind of like all one open area. And then... You go upstairs, there's a guest room, kids' room, bathroom that's not functioning, and a master bedroom. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. It's a small area, small stairs, everything's kind of small. So basically, we could only do the second floor and the first floor. Could not go in the basement at all. Which, honestly, was probably okay because, like we've stressed, we we spent a lot of time in the basement the first go. We didn't get to really investigate. First off, we didn't get to investigate together anywhere other than the basement. So it was fun to kind of get to go investigate the second floor and the first floor. Yes. And as they know, we, we only got to the basement because I threw a massive fit. Mm-hmm. She did. She demanded to be I to did. go down there. I'm glad I you really did. wanted to go there. Listen, <laughs> two and a half years later, I am glad Thank you threw you. that fit. I appreciate that. We got some really good evidence down there. Just us three. It was perfect. It was great. So, so okay. Let's kind of start. Boyd's then got to go to Sally House first. I sure did. Yeah. So we had she to be was there. So brave. I th- I thought we had to be there by a certain time. Turns out they just give you a code, a code. beforehand. Yeah. And she that? was the only one who could be there at that time because it was so, so last responsible. minute. Yeah. Yes. I punched in my code. I walk in and I was like, oh, wow, I'm in the Sally house all by myself. Yeah, you are. It and was so daylight. I keep, it was still daylight, scary. but it's still spooky. And so I kept my purse on and I got my laptop out and I was just editing our episode that would have come out that Sunday. And I was just sitting there. I like took some <laughs> selfies. Like, look at me. I'm in the Sally house. I'm the we bravest so bitch her. ever. Yeah. Yes. I, I was, was shocked. I was impressed with myself. Yeah. And then, so I'm just in the middle of recording or editing the episode. And I hear like these noises and these, this like male voice. And I was like, oh my God, am I hearing this? Am I actually this is so hearing real. something? And so I, I stop what I'm doing. And I was like, let me, let me just experience this. Then, I see these shadows walk by the window. Come to find out, it was two people who probably are just very familiar with Sally House. And they came (laughs) in. 
the blinds were like they were down, but they were they were open. open. How you can yeah. open mm-hmm. with the turn, but they were opened at an angle upwards. Ah. And so if you looked, if you were on the outside looking in, you, you could not really see, see down. Yeah, you could only see. Uh, through yeah (laughs) and i was sitting just under the window in the rocking chair and so i heard this voice and at first i was excited and then i realized it was like a stranger and so then my my actual fear kicked and i was like stranger danger and so i just froze and i heard it was a male and a female and they were laughing about like the the wallpaper um and the old tv that yeah. they have and like there's this radio there's it's an outdated that they house have. Yeah. it's very yeah. outdated and they were just laughing about it and i was like just sitting there where i could see them but they couldn't see me because <laughs> they were looking too high in the blinds you should have been banging on the wall if I they would have stayed that. there yeah. five seconds longer i would have just taken my left hand and just like banged on the window yes. i wish you would have oh man i my brain just had to compute these things and so before that five seconds came they turned around and left and went to their car yeah but i seriously thought that it was just a male upstairs well it turns out that's a common thing because yes. i had put out a, a like a call to action on social media people tell us about your story and somebody responded that they had a fairly quiet night, but they had people peeking through the blinds. Yes. And I was like, a oh, funny thing. We did too. <laughs> Same, actually. <Yeah. laughs> and we, there's a book there. We say this almost every place we go to has yeah. like a book of tell us your experience right. while you're here. And a lot of people had put that in the book that there was people who come up. Listen, like yeah. like we said, this house is very famous, especially in the Midwest. Yeah. So, so I we, get it. We didn't really investigate, though, this floor much. It was kind of our safe spot. That was our safe spot. The living room was our safe spot. That's where we were going to sleep. Yeah. We couldn't go to the basement, so we just kept that door closed. Yeah. Um, we followed the rules. Which they have it roped off. They do. Like, you can't go in yeah. there. And yeah. when they say safety concerns, I'm thinking, like, something's Maybe caving the stairs in, are so. going to fall. Yeah. Like, Foundation, we're going to follow the rules, of course. I'll yeah. follow it. So we didn't go down there. I was thinking somebody got possessed, but sure. Yeah. I, I mean, did I get, open I get the that door too. and take pictures down the stairs, but that's... I didn't cross the threshold. Yeah. Yep. So we primarily spent our time upstairs. Like I said, there's three bedrooms, children's room, master bedroom, and guest room. The children's room is noted to have a lot of experience. Um, there's a ton <clears throat> of toys and stuffed animals there. Yeah. And so that is noted to have the most kind of paranormal activity. So we spent a lot of time there. Yeah. We kind of joked about like how many toys they had to choose from. Yes. It's like pinwheels and dolls and unicorns. So many. And, and a rolling giraffe. Raggedy Ann. And we oh, played yeah. with some of those toys. We sat on the rocking mm-hmm. horse. Rocking horse I did. I kept calling it a rocking Boys chair. Did too. I, I did. <laughs> yeah, we tried. We tried to look I cute had, but here we are <laughs> i had some of the audio from there i've not listened to all of it but i did hear enough to hear sarah mocking me <laughs> what did i say oh, no. i was talking about if you know anything about ghost hunting you know sally house and i'm downstairs doing a live that's why i was talking and i hear sarah upstairs go if you are anyone <laughs> if you know anything about to anything, be fair <laughs> i did the same thing now <laughs> to your face <laughs> i know <laughs> and i was like Listen to this, and I was like, that is rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I sounded rude. Um, and then um, I heard Sarah say that she needed to go downstairs and get her phone charger or something, and Boydson goes, no. <laughs> you oh, you don't want to be, be up there alone. alone. <laughs> yes, I did. I do remember I'm that. I'm a firm believer in the buddy system. <laughs> yes, I get that. Yes. Yeah. I think the kids' room is where a lot of our recordings are from because mm-hmm. it's said to be – it's got one of the most – one of the higher rates of activity is the kids' room. So history in the kids' room, um, because it used to be when a family lived there, you know, that was their kids' room, and they would walk in, and stuffed animals would be, like, rearranged in a circle around the floor. The kids would be screaming and crying and unable to say why. Just lots of spooky stuff happened there. Yeah, like the closet door would open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, toys rearranging themselves. In a circle? Hard pass. Yep. Yeah. So I'll start, because once Sarah and Lindsay arrived... We went to our Atchison hotspot, which is called Willie's. Yes, we did. We do love that place. It's a restaurant. It's got a spinach artichoke quesadilla. <laughs> it's delightful. <laughs> it's got good drinks. Yes, it does. Yes. And Lindsay and I are always like, what are we going to get? And we get the same thing every we time. So. <laughs> Listen, we are creatures of habit. <laughs> we are. Not ashamed. Yeah, I had recommendations for even a Mexican restaurant. And I know. we're like, no, we're going to go to Willie's. We're going to Willie's. Because we like- we've been to Atchison a couple times because one of our favorite locations, McIntyre, is there. Yeah. Yep. We always go to Willie's. We like Atchison. <laughs> what do we say? We do. Yeah. So I left a recorder going in the children's room while we were at dinner. And I hear a few bangs, possibly footsteps initially. <laughs> And then 
a, a little while later, I hear kind of like a foot shuffling on carpet. It sounds like the sound, like if your foot has a sock on it and then you drag your foot across carpet, mm-hmm. it makes this unique sound. And that's what it sounds like to me. Um, and then a little bit after that, there was like a small squeak, like a like an old door handle was being jiggled or maybe even a door was stuck on the door frame. But that's that's really what I got in the children's room. Um, I had the overnight at the children's room, which we went to bed at 1 a.m. Mm-hmm. One or two. One or two, yeah. One or two. Um, you know, Sarah and I got on the air mattress. Boyd Sink gets on the couch. Yeah. I In um, our safe spot, the living room. Yes. In our safe spot, the living room. I We left a recorder going. And within 11 minutes of this recorder going and us being downstairs, I hear a growl. And yeah. the whole night, we weren't really feeling anything. We weren't no. getting anything. It was very quiet there. We remarked very... that several times. It was. And we weren't, you guys even weren't getting like any bad feelings. Vibes. Not at yeah. all. Not at all. In the moment, I remember thinking like, man, I wish we could go to the basement because that's where I felt we like really we did. would get the most evidence. Yeah. But Obviously, we couldn't. We so couldn't. We yeah. To. Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't push those boundaries, right? Especially for safety, right? Um, and so it's nice to hear that even though we didn't feel much of anything in the moment, that yeah. things were going on that we couldn't necessarily mm-hmm. perceive. It's a good reminder when this happens because this is not the first time that yes. we've not had vibes per se right. <laughs> at a house. Um, but then overnight we get really good, yep, evidence, really good evidence. So, and this place, and I have lots of famous last words on. Um, <laughs> from this place i told yes, them do. <laughs> um at you know 30 minutes in ish is when i yelled upstairs hey recorder we're going to sleep so if you hear anything from here on out it's the ghost not me fun story Lindsay. Listen, because when i'm listening to these overnights i'm like is that us still like what time did we go to bed no. so like i was yelling yeah. up like hey we are in bed we're not getting up it's fair and then yeah. i said Smart. i will probably get up to pee again and i famous last words oh my gosh you guys <laughs> i peed four to five times an hour for three hours no less than like probably 30 times i that kept night. getting I think that you was, have a problem i honestly like i think i need to call my primary care doctor <laughs> i because it happened again do. last week i didn't oh. sleep last week it was i was exhausted it was a wednesday night when i'm the most tired I didn't fall asleep till 4 a.m. It's like you were overthinking, like you were tired, but then you were like, any time you had to go, you were like, right. I gotta get up and go. And um, that But then I was like, week. is she just not able to sleep? Um, I couldn't. Because we shared an air mattress. Yes, she felt every time I got up. And it's and okay. I'm so sorry. No, please don't apologize. But I, I wasn't s- mad at all. I, I just was said like, in like, every time you moved, I'm like, I'm so Hi. sorry. <laughs> I even I said, are you life. okay? Are you all right? We know you two have had problems falling asleep. Of course. At places, because you get feelings, you get vibes. I have, and I said in my live that night, I will probably sleep because I never have problems sleeping. Yeah. I did not fall asleep. We went to bed at one or two. I fell asleep at 5.30 in the morning. Yes. Slept till 6.30 in the morning when your alarm alarm went went off off. Uh and you weren't waking up. And I was like, Sarah. (laughs) (laughs) And so then I woke up at seven. So I got maybe an hour and a half of sleep that place. Yes. And I was, I had my book. I was reading. I kept getting up to pee. And I was like, am I not sleeping because I'm like having to pee so much? Am I not sleeping because I'm feeling uncomfortable? Like I don't I th- know. I think you were uncomfortable, Lindsay. I could I not sleep and I was tired. You were tossing and turning a lot that night too. You, you just couldn't get comfortable. You I were was unsettled. Cold. That yeah. was part of it. But at one point I was wearing a But it wasn't hoodie. very cold in there. Like I was I sleeping right next freezing. to you. Like I, I was grabbed fine. my hoodie. I pulled my hoodie up over my head because yeah. at one point I was like, I can't have like any part of my body exposed. Like, right. I just so had... I didn't have that experience at all. I was literally laying right next to you, and I'm normally, like, covering my whole head. You both I... were sound asleep. Yeah. I slept like a baby. She so- fell asleep first, for sure. And we, like I said, we were not having any vibes, any feelings. No. I probably could have been, and, like, I'm not trying to be... I wasn't out mad at all, but I probably could have slept. Yeah. But I... I'm a light sleeper. And I was like, oh, Lindsay's awake. I had my AirPods okay? in. I <laughs> yes. had my white noise going. So I no, and I couldn't anything. hear any of that. I was reading. I would turn off my Kindle to try to sleep. Couldn't sleep. Turn my yeah. Kindle back on. Try to read to sleep. Dude, that's the sleep. worst feeling. I totally get it. That is exactly what happened at Malvern. And I had been had up the same thing in McIntyre. 7 a.m. that yeah. day. Yeah. So I was exhausted. I was almost right. 24 hours. I was tired, but I... Could not sleep. And it got to the point at like 3, 3.30 a.m. I laid there and I was like, 
I could drive home right now. Yeah. Like I could just leave and drive home and I'm sure they wouldn't care. But I was like, knowing me, as soon as I get in the car, I'm going to get tired. It was very frustrating. Like it was just so it. frustrating for me. I almost slept in the car and McIntyre. Like I was like, or no, not a McIntyre, Malvern. I was like, I can't handle this for one minute longer. Yes. I just want to sleep in the car. I totally understand. That and is I miserable. I couldn't pinpoint why at one point i was yeah. like is it because i know there's a pentagram below me like there's a pentagram on the yeah. ground below me and i was like is that why like i i don't know i wasn't hearing things like i have no. at other places i've heard footsteps no, at that obviously and didn't able scare to you, but maybe something was affecting you and you just didn't realize it in the moment maybe but in the overnight audio maybe <laughs> I don't know what it was. It could have been insomnia. Open? We're going to break her. Oh one of these days. <laughs> but I will What's say. What's it going to take? Two nights of not sleeping? <laughs> okay. So in the overnight audio, though, I did hear footsteps. And I even put it as shuffling. So when you say that, like, you heard, like, it sounded like socks on carpet, mm-hmm. which it is all carpet upstairs. This audio that was in the kids' room overnight, I mean, I hear shuffling. I hear footsteps. I heard a growl a couple times. And there was, like, one minute that was... We were definitely in bed. You could not hear anything from us. You could not hear me repeatedly flushing the toilet or the washing my hands or the plumbing. And I told them this. I never shut the door to the bathroom. (laughs) Sorry, guys. I peeped the door open. open. (laughs) Yeah, I just left it open. It was happening so often. So anything we heard, it was not me opening and closing the door. It was nothing. I did hear a growl. And there was this was for a minute. You hear a growl. A few seconds later, it sounds like you're hearing like someone breathing right up next to the recorder. And then another growl. And then the REM pod goes off literally for like split second. It makes one beep and that's it. And that's all in the kids' room. And this is all in the kids' room. Yeah. Um, and then you hear a tapping. And then a minute after all of that activity, it sounds like something is being dropped onto the floor. <laughs> um, which can't think of anything we were doing at that time we were in bed Mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure you two were asleep at that point. i was doing nothing (laughs) you were both asleep i was reading um i hear a couple thuds and bangs something that sounds like a giggle but it's very faint so it makes me think it's like out in the hallway um and then i hear more shuffling creepy though a giggle (laughs) yeah it sounds like a giggle yikes and then i hear what sounds like more shuffling around and a growl as well so lots of things that i was hearing yeah you did i had a couple of audio um pieces from the kids room also mm-hmm. one of them i don't i don't think we were alive during this time but we were definitely talking so we were awake. we did spend a lot of time upstairs <laughs> yeah i think this was probably right before we went to bed though because i think we were like oh, are we ready to call it so right before then we were talking about the ron weasley song quite a bit Yes, Snape. <laughs> Snape. Yes, that one. Severus Snape. That's Dumbledore. the door. Ron, Ron Weasley. Dumbledore. Beautiful. That is the song that we are talking about. In case you're curious, yeah, <laughs> we we put it on repeat in our recording. So it was beautiful. I'm sure we all heard it. Um, Boyston at one point is very punny per usual and says, "No stock in the talk." And <laughs> what was that even referencing? <laughs> You were talking about, I don't put any stock in TikTok. And she said, I don't put stock in the talk. And she's You're right. so clever, Winston. Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you. The only thing that really happened, we were asking, this is when we were being serious. Okay. We were asking lots of questions. Were we doing the we were professional Fasma ghost box? hunters? Um, not, not at this point. Okay. But we were being quiet and asking questions one at a time. Yes. The only thing that really happened was the flashlight did go off in the hallway. I do remember that. By the toucan? By the toucan, same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think that may have been the only flashlight that we got. I got the second half of the overnight recording from the kids' room. Mm-hmm. And I got um, two and a half hours of nothing. That was fun. But at two hours and 30 minutes in, I hear a growl. Hmm. <laughs> So. Which is interesting because we, like, I divvy up the audio and I send it to everybody separately. Right. Like, each person has their own separate assignment. Right. Basically. And so, for you to get a growl and then for you to get a growl yeah. separately, that's Hours pretty interesting. Apart. Yeah. And I even, like, commented to them, did you guys even get anything? Because I'm, like, listening to this whole audio. I mean, it's just like, white oh noise gosh. that you're yeah. listening to for hours. It's like, two and a half hours. And finally, like, I'm like, I think I hear something. And then I repeat it back. So... 
And it sounds like the growls that I heard. Because we played it for each other here tonight before we started recording. Now, keep in mind, we hear the furnace going on and off all night. You can definitely tell what that is. We say this every time. Yes. (laughs) We listen to hours and hours (laughs) of white noise. Because that's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And so when we hear a growl, when we hear something, obviously the first thing we're doing is trying to debunk it. Right. Is that a dog? Is that a car driving past? Right. We know what a car driving past sounds like. We know what a furnace clicking on and off sounds like. Yeah, after you two hear and a half it so hours. many times. Yes. You're like, okay, I can I can tell what so that is. So we can tell when something is different. Yeah, and this is between like the times that it was on. So it was like during the the silent times, mm-hmm. and you can hear something. And I thought maybe the furnace would click on after it, but it it definitely did not. So. Right. And the only person moving around at this time is me, getting up and going to the bathroom <laughs> And repeatedly. I hope you were not coming up and growling into the recorders. I not. I did not come upstairs. And like oh I said- Oh my God, I just had to picture you like slowly crawling up the stairs. Backwards on all fours. Oh my God, what stop. <laughs> yes, I would do that so nobody would even see. Nobody would see it. And then your head spins around and you vomit. Okay. I did have okay, like- Lindsay images while I kept Reagan. getting up to pee. So the bathroom door, I kept it open. Like I said, I didn't touch it. The back door is like right across from the yes. bathroom. And I kept thinking, what if somebody, like it's two or three in the morning, what if somebody's coming up and being like looking in because it's the Yeah, we talked about that a lot. Like, I mean, obviously they're peeking like, in the front they're windows. They're going to see me peeing. <laughs> Why aren't they peeking in the back? But I mean, I, I think I said at that time in the recording, like, well, that sounds like their problem. Yeah. If they want to see me peeing. <laughs> Sorry. Congratulations. <laughs> Great. Okay. So we also spent time, though, in the guest bedroom. We have recordings from there. And we had a <clears> new <throat> toy in the guest bedroom. Yes, we did. Boydston. Laser it grid. It was the grid. Oh. She like, looked at me like, I know, what are you like, talking about? Did we? On the wall. I, I talked know. about it because I had the recordings from there. Did you have any? We got a tuple, a tuple a of tuple tools. A tuple of tools. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of tools to add to our tool belt. We have a laser grid now and we have an SB7 spirit box. And so what we use, we are, I'm telling you, we are professional, (laughs) whether you guys want to acknowledge it or not, we're professional. I am acknowledging it now. So we use the laser grid in the second bedroom. What is the laser grid? Explain to our listeners. It is a laser beam, which you should never look into, or a airplanes, um, that has a grid. (laughs) What? With multiple red dots. Yes. That go into a wall. They were green, weren't they? Oh, I thought they were red. They think they're red. Okay. Sure. okay colorblind. <laughs> red, green, same thing. <laughs> but yes, they, it was a pretty big like panel. Yeah. I don't know. Five by five? Honestly, it's as big as you want it to be. If it you, like, oh, okay. filled up an entire wall. Yeah. If you pull it away from the wall, it fills it all yeah, up. Yeah, we put it up close. on the whole closet yeah. side. Um, I had the audio from this time. Okay. And we took it very seriously. Oh, well, that's nice to hear. Can you believe it? <laughs> no. Because we're professionals. So as you mentioned, we used a REM pod, laser grid, a recorder, and a spirit box. Yes. Um, in order to really nail in that we were professionals, we made shadow puppets. <laughs> <laughs> in the uh, laser grid. <laughs> Listen, we take this seriously. We were showing the ghosts what it would look like if they walked in front of it. Here's little bunny foo foo. <laughs> did I do little bunny foo foo? It's true. <laughs> oh, we I did. did. <laughs> Scooping up the field mice and she bops them on the That's head. That's all I could think of. <laughs> we did a great job. We had to demonstrate to the ghost what it looked like. So <laughs> that's why. Boys if you get those lights on the wall, we're always going to make you shadow puppets. <laughs> Listen, we are mature 30 something year olds. <laughs> we are professional paranormal investigators. Okay. <laughs> Little bunny foo foo. Boys and says, we need to be serious. Aww. Oh, she said that. <laughs> I wasn't here for it. Uh, she said, it. farts. Do, <laughs> do you fart as a ghost? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I don't remember that at all, and I was not drunk. <laughs> I know. We, I don't we just asked this. a lot of questions, and there was a lot of good conversation. We were like, well, I guess that's true. Maybe the growls that we hear are stomach growls from ghosts. Yeah, yeah, we were yeah. talking about bodily functions. I'm like, if they it. can't eat or pee or poop, are they... Or do they? I feel like in my afterlife, there is just a constant buffet of Chick-fil-A. nice food. <laughs> it's, there's Chick-fil-A. Yes. And I'm just eating it. Yeah. Um, at one point, Lindsay and I Gosh, both hear. No, we both okay. hear noises from the hallway, but I can't hear it on the recorder. Maybe I should give it to you because we all know my hearing is <laughs> subpar. We use the spirit box. We got a lot of different words. I'll just give you a few. Disagree, land, information, control. We got the name Lauren like a couple of times. We got uh, died, month, 
shame, uh, relationship, daughter, leave, father, guide, important, prepare, help, religious. And then we talked about the Book of Mormon and the Holy Bible downstairs. Because they had copies of both. Oh, yes. Uh, the Book of Mormon was on, on audio tape. Oh, <laughs> interesting. I mean, I guess they might have, but they it, had was, the book too. it was an electronic version as well. Um, I asked who used to live here and it said dead. Mm. And then it also said leave, died, and peaceful. Mm-hmm. And it did say the word leave multiple times. And we were like, we're not going to leave. We're going to sleep downstairs. <laughs> we're not leaving. We're here. <laughs> and then Lindsay, you complained randomly that your left boob started hurting. <laughs> and you're All like, lefty. Why so, am I the way that I am? It was affected. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but maybe that's why you were chosen. Maybe that's why I couldn't sleep. You, I think so. I mean, you you talked about it at length. The spirit of your left boob. <laughs> <laughs> I will say. Like, it really hurts all of a sudden. Like, it feels like. like I don't remember do some that. Beats. My left boob is fine now. <laughs> okay, thank God. I don't remember it even hurting like when I was laying there in bed. I've been worried ever since. I feel like I might have even chimed in probably because that's something I would do. Like, oh, yeah, mine hurt earlier. I'm trying to make you feel normal. But, um. <laughs> Trying to make you feel normal. <laughs> You're such a good friend. <laughs> or I just want to be included in everything. <laughs> yeah, that's probably both. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you did. You did definitely talk about that multiple times. <laughs> Interesting. I don't remember that, but okay. Yes. Um. We also went to the master bedroom. We sure did. Which has a chair in it that they don't like you to sit in. But Boyd's don't tell us it. no. Don't tell Boyd's to know. She sat in it last time, and that's where our first picture was taken from. She took. <laughs> The first picture of me and Sarah together. Yep. <laughs> From that spot. Yeah. But the Which closet <laughs> the closet <laughs> in the master bedroom is supposedly haunted. There was a little girl who was on a tour with her family who went in there and they yeah. couldn't find her. And when they found her, she was playing with her friend, she said, up there. Which was not really Which there. Was nobody. Yeah. We did not go in the master closet because it was freezing. It was so cold. Like yes. 30 degrees cooler. They had the, the door the closed, so I'm sure there's no heating in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we didn't go in there. But we did spend some time in the master bedroom. Um, we did Phasma Box in there. Mm-hmm. And we were on live quite a bit there. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, not a ton of spooky vibes, and I don't think we left a recorder there. Overnight. Right. We mainly left the recorders in the kids' room because that is reportedly the most haunted place. Yep. Yeah, so we read through the book. We spent some time doing that. And the we- book. The book. We wanted to share some stories, not only from the book, but I, like I said, I put a call to action out on social media and I asked for people's stories. I got a few responses. Okay. So I'll share two of those. All right. Let's just go round robin. Yeah. You want to start? Yeah. On 5-7-2021, it says, Kelly and Kathy came to visit and investigate We heard on our ovulus, Haley, Nathan, Maya, Andrew, John, Charlie, Ben, the words exit, purgatory, cut, in Sally's room, which is the kids' room. Kathy went to the far right of the bedroom and heard a voice say, choke and Charlie. Choke the Charlie. Sorry, uh, what? Felt, felt... (laughs) Felt very nauseous in this room. Words by the table in the kitchen were wound, nightmare, age, divide, max, salvation, louder, closet, may. Had a great time. No apparition. No apparitions <laughs> or scratches. Okay. Lots of names. My goodness. Yeah. I have one from 413-2021 that said, heavy air as soon as you walk in. Cold as hell in a few rooms, which, sidebar, I have never understood that expression, cold as hell. Because it's hot? Because hell is not cold. So you're saying it's not cold at all? Well, Maybe whenever it's cold. it freezes over, it's cold. <laughs> True no. story. But then you need to add that caveat. I don't know. Anyways, cold too as many hell. Words. Too many words. In a few rooms, which this is April. April in the Midwest. It's not typically very cold. And this place did have heating. TikTok filters picked up energy. Oh, yes. The TikTok filters. We talked about those. We did. Cameras would lag. That's where the stock and the top came from, by the way. That's why we were talking about the stock and the top. There it is. All right. um, I think they meant to say spooky vibes, but they said spoopy. Spoopy. (laughs) With two P's. (laughs) 
It's very spoopy. It there really was a lot of grammatical the errors in this book. We made, we noticed that. We had you a know, nice time with it. It changes the tone a All right. lot. <laughs> spoopy. Um, they talked about, so they couldn't go to the basement either. So they talked about, they took pictures at the entrance to the basement and the camera would lag for an incredibly long time. Went over and took a picture in the kitchen, and it worked perfectly. Went back to the basement, and it lagged again. Mm, and this time okay. they spelled spooky correctly. What was Thank it trying God. to focus on? The lady that fell down the stairs. All right, so my, my aunt actually responded to this. Her name is Susan. I didn't know your aunt had been there, by the way. She has been there. She is awesome. into Halloween just as much as we are. Hi, Susan. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, she always, like, reaches out with all these fun stories. So she talked to us about Sally House. She said... About five years ago, I did the Haunted Atchison tour with several friends. That particular day, allegedly, there was a lot of activity at Sally House, so they opened it to the public. Mm-hmm. I had never been inside, was fascinated by it, so went in there with my daughter, Hallie, and a close friend, Susan S. So two Susans here. Oh, it's just like me and my two Sarahs. Oh, I love oh, it. Aww. It's okay. Uh, we walked through the first <laughs> floor, escorted by a guide. We uh, climbed the stairs to the second floor, which we've talked about several times. Yeah. And I experienced pressure in my chest. I did not say anything to anyone and tried to ignore the pressure as the guide showed us the bedrooms and told the history of the rooms. I was not feeling well as we descended the stairs and left through the front door. As soon as we got outside, the pressure in my chest disappeared. I asked Hallie and Susan if they had felt anything while in the house. They did not. During the next couple of months, though, I had the worst sinus infections and respiratory virus I'd ever had. I'd also gotten stung by a wasp on my cheekbone, which thumbs down. Yeah. Major swelling and tetanus shot ensued. Bad three months. I think the spirit attached itself to me while I was in the house and impacted my immune system for a time thereafter. I have since read all the books about Sally House and truly believe that there are some bad spirits there. While I want to go back to Atchison, I'll never set foot in that house again. Wow. Never. Wow. So, she had some pretty bad experiences afterwards. That's pretty drastic. Yikes. Uh, a guy named Jerry had a lot to say on 5-8 of 2021. It says, a point of fact, this configuration of the house <laughs> did not exist in 1905. Oh, yes, I remember, Jerry. The kitchen is an add-on as well <laughs> as the nursery. In 1905, Dr. Finney lived next door in the red brick house. This house originally had three adults living in it and no room for an office. Dr. Finney already had two other offices, one on 5th Street and one with the railroad. All facts all documented and my favorite thing about this this little uh, entry mm-hmm. into this Detail. log is somebody's somebody wrote phone. underneath it you suck sir oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> was, listen we sat around and read these for a long time that is not nice that's not but i mean he's taking the fun out of it jerry awesome. you're probably right okay let but it be you gotta be a fun ruiner all right on four fifteen twenty one. Um, someone reported a husband and wife team went to investigate and they said that upon entering the house, something brushed up against their lower left leg. Ugh. So they entered the house. They felt very depressive. It was a heavy atmosphere. Um, they said, generally, we are bright people, but you can just tell that something happened and still continues to happen here. Definitely a highlight for us. We took an entire hour of footage, pictures, and EVPs, um, and they said that they would report back if they got anything. But just heavy, uncomfortable, depressed vibe, and they said something brushed up against them right as soon as they walked in the hallway. Hmm. Um, Somebody named Andrea. She's one of our friends, one of our followers on Facebook. She said she didn't have a ton of experiences there, but she took some friends from high school there. Uh, they were taking a tour, and her friend screamed by the basement door. She said it felt like somebody brushed up against her. Mm. How about that? Um, they've done dowsing rods in the upstairs bedroom and seemed to get some communication, and they got ghost box app communication um, in the upstairs closet. Gotcha. Which was where that little girl was. So. And I want to say that. They said that they brushed up against their leg, which six-year-old girl. Think there about where go. they would be. Yeah, right there. Right there at your leg. How about that? I've got a long one, and it. I had to read it because it was in bold letters and underlined. <laughs> it said, read. 
Read this one. Well, you are going to read it. I'm going to read it. It's from 11, 17, 2021. Hmm, that's fairly recent. From either Kelly or Catherine. I'm not sure. Uh, it says this was. <laughs> These are spelled completely different. Yeah, but they're both written underneath the post. Oh, okay. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's Kelly either or Catherine. It says, this was the most surreal experience we have ever had. Everything started off pretty calm, and the only out-of-pocket thing we noticed was a toy in the nursery that kept going off. It continued going off for the entirety of our trip here. We opened up the basement door and began to get some bad vibes, but came back later to check it out. Once all three of us were on the steps, oh... They went past the barrier. I was actually thinking, maybe we should have opened the door. Like, we can't go down there, but maybe we should have opened the door. Mm. We did open the door. But, like, kept it open. Yeah. Yeah. No, we shut it. Yeah. So, she says, once all three of us were on the steps, the basement door slammed shut behind us. We went to go check back upstairs, and there was not only a raggedy and doll moved onto the bed, the toys in the closet were newly arranged in a circle on the floor. I remember that. (laughs) We stayed in there for a second. Second, and we caught the closet door closing on on its own. Heck no! On video, there was a glass bunny moved into the doorway of the other room upstairs, and we watched as the two balls rolled down the stairs. <laughs> and I'm as I'm writing this, the cradle in front of the door is moving. We sent our friend Will, who got welts <laughs> on his back, when the other door shut upstairs alone. And the door shut by itself in the nursery. We went back into the room and all of the toys were put away neatly in the closet. No. No. <laughs> I, I don't think Lizzie liked that story. Run out of my, I would run out of the house if the toys were rearranged. That's what it takes. <clears throat> That's yes. what it takes for Lindsay to run out of the room. Toys. Dolls. Creepy. No. Okay. Now I know what your limit is. Reading through the book. There was a couple themes. One, I noticed that after about 2 or 3 a.m., they said that everything stopped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was Which like once they why, went to bed. Why my recording was a lot more quiet, I think, yes. than yours. They said once they went to bed, everything kind of died down. Yeah. So I didn't notice that. I noticed the second theme was that the stereo in the living room, they said when they arrived at the house, was playing already. Mm-hmm. Um, if that stereo was playing whenever I walked in, <laughs> I would have walked right back out. It was not playing when you got there, and no. it did not turn on by itself. But that was another thing that I noticed was kind of a theme a lot of people were saying. And the third thing that I noticed was that people were saying just feeling this heavy, depressive atmosphere. Not really seeing any apparitions or anything like that, but just getting this sense of yeah, not welcome. I agree. I would add a fourth theme, okay, Ooh, which it. is you either get a lot. Or you get nothing. A lot of people said they had very quiet nights. Yes. Right. Which, you know, to be honest, ours wasn't – we are always going to go back and compare to our basement experience, which was was pretty incredible. It was. And so it's really hard to live up to that. And since we weren't able to go back to the basement, uh, we just weren't getting – Spoopy vibes. Spoopy, Spoopy vibes <laughs> were hard to come across. And I kept they even were. asking you guys. I was like, are you feeling anything? I know you did. And we getting? were both like, no, I could. We both said, I could go to sleep right now. Here's the thing. I when, thought I could too. When <laughs> I was trying to sleep though, I I genuinely felt like, okay, I feel fine. The only thing that is freaking me out is that somebody, if that's true, and that lady died on the stairs, mm-hmm. then this person died Literally right next I mean, to us. We were right by the basement door. Yes. And so that was bothering me a little bit. Not to the point where I couldn't sleep, obviously, because <laughs> I could. Yeah. But it did it did bother me a little bit to the point where I was like thinking about it. I think the pentagram bothered me more than I thought it would. Uh-huh. Um it didn't bother me when we were there in twenty nineteen <clears throat> because we didn't stay the night in twenty nineteen. Yeah, we right. left at two AM. Um, but laying there knowing it was below me, like I just kept thinking about it, like whether it's haunted, whether it's not, whether Sally was there's definitely negative stuff. But whether Sally was a real legend or like whether it happened or not, like people did do terrible things in the basement and I I don't think I don't think the pentagram has or anything to do with the Sally No, it doesn't legend. Yeah. No, but people did do bad things in this house. Sure. There is a negative history there. Yeah. Um and so that bothered me and I don't know if that kind of messed with me where I couldn't fall asleep. I don't know. 
my husband's coworker who follows us and listens um, was like, hey, she told my husband, she was like, hey, I saw that your wife just went to the Sally house, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, she was just there last weekend. And she was like, I would not let anybody come into my house who had been there. And my husband was like, he's like me. He was like, well, mm. I mean, you know, blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's not, it's, it's okay. not real, yeah. blah, blah. That's <laughs> what he said. Well, not, not real, but I like, know. it'll be okay. I'm saying he's more of a skeptic than I am. Okay. Um, and she was like, no, you don't mess with that kind of stuff. And she said, there is some satanic stuff there. And I was like. Okay, even if she's right, but it's not like we were. So. No, no. But she was saying like, she felt like I would bring something home with me. But how do you know that's not like that at the hospital for God's right. sake? Right. No, I know. I mean. It's hard to make that judgment call because, of course, we're not affiliated with that kind of stuff. We right. don't, we don't, you know, practice any dark magic around pentagrams or whatever that or may be. Or invite that in. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's that kind of stuff can be affiliated or associated with anything. So, And who's to say something hasn't, like, followed us home at places? I True. feel like we've all had, I had some a kind of experience. asked me that the other day. She yeah. was like, do you think that some of your – because, obviously – uh, not obviously. I don't know. I have anxieties. We've talked about this many times. Mm-hmm. And she's like, do you think some of your anxieties are maybe related to some of the places you've gone to? And I was like, well, seeing as how they've existed way before <laughs> we've gone to that, I don't think so. But then I started thinking, well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they aren't. It's hard to say. Hard to say. I did tell you guys this before, but you know that my husband had a dream. Yes. So I'll tell you guys this as well. This is shortly after Sally House. And he had a dream, which my husband does not dream. He does not remember his dreams. He has even told me before, I don't think that I'm the type of person who dreams. So he had a dream that he woke up and there was a dark mass, a dark shadow in the corner of our bedroom. Yeah. And he was like having a sleep paralysis episode where he was trying to get up, trying to warn me because he thought somebody had broken into our home in the middle of the night. Yikes. And he was trying to get up, trying to warn me, and he couldn't move. And that's when he was like, wait, maybe this isn't real then. Um, And he said that in his dream, I was talking to him and telling him no one's there, no one's there, but he kept seeing the shadow in the corner of our room. I found that unusual because my husband does not dream. He doesn't talk like that. He doesn't talk like that. He Mm -hmm. is the... I mean, I wouldn't even call him a skeptic. He's a complete non-believer. Yeah. And so he was just like, it was weird. I don't remember my dreams, but I had a dream that like there was a corner, like a dark Person shadow in, in our room. And like, I thought someone broke in in the middle of the night. And I was like, really? See, that kind of stuff just <laughs> makes me think that like maybe we suppress things so much that we don't really realize them in the moment and things kind of pop mm-hmm. up later on. We're like, well, maybe more things happen than we recognize i don't know yeah i thought it was odd just because i didn't have any dreams yeah after sally house i didn't sleep i didn't have any dreams but yet yeah he, but he, he did. did yeah interesting thoughts i'm like just to trail off of what you're saying like a defense mechanism like yeah. your body is putting up this wall i totally agree when actually things are happening around you your body's just got this wall up and you're like mm, no i'm just we're not there yet yeah mm-hmm. yeah but then it kind of like comes up Later on. I can see that because different ways. we have had, like you said earlier, we've had several places where we've gone and we're like, man, I'm just really not feeling anything. Right. And you just, you just don't get the hype. Yeah. And then we go back and we listen to these, these recordings yes. and you know, like nothing was happening when you hear these things. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's some in- incredible things that we've heard. Right. I totally agree. Yeah. And looking back, you're like, mm, well, I mean, obviously that did happen. It was in the recording, but mm-hmm. Maybe I just try to normalize it too much. Right, right. And there's also been places that <clears throat> we have heard stuff happening while we're there. Yeah. And have felt creepy vibes. And still, I'm able to sleep through it all. Right, right. Like, I don't care. But yet, this place where we weren't getting a vibe, we weren't hearing anything, you guys fell asleep immediately. I couldn't. I would love to go back to Sally House once the basement's open again. I agree. And I think we all wanted to do that, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I really want to go back to the basement. I did love getting to do a private there. I loved I getting totally to agree. go investigate the upstairs because I didn't get to do that first time. Yeah. Um, and I loved getting to have that private time with you guys as well. Yeah. We had we had a <laughs> great oh we had a great private time. <laughs> sounds, sounds weird when you say it, but okay. It does sound weird when you say that. <laughs> you said it. I, I meant just it in a sentimental way and you made it sound weird. So I'm not I sure. I do that best. That. Thank you. Um <laughs> So, yes, we would love to go back to Sally House once the basement is reopened. We will probably make that happen again. What is you guys' rating? I don't remember your rating from two years ago. Oh, I don't think that we were doing the rating system at that time. Okay. I Can could be wrong. Do we rate it on the first and second experience? Well, let's do a cumulative. Okay. 
All right, I'll say seven. How about you do rating first time, rating second time? Let's do an average. Mm. All right, rating first time was an eight. Okay. Rating second time was a five. 6.5. Okay, I said seven. (laughs) That's close. I uh, rounded up. Uh, First time was probably an eight. Okay. The second time, I mean, a four. So six overall. Yeah. Even after listening back to some of the evidence. Yeah. It's just hard because that the first time was like so concentrated in the basement. Mm-hmm. It really was. And we just really didn't have any time there. So like the rest of the house was really not spooky. Vi- spooky I will vibes. say though, the first time around, Boydson, you got some pictures up in the kids' room we and did in the cool living pictures room. pictures up there. Some like light, some light abnormalities. Light anonymo- so anomalies, do yeah. we think that maybe the energy with more people in the house is what brings... Yeah, this is one of the most famous places, at least in the, it's probably the most famous in the Midwest. I agree. Yeah, it um, is. And I, we've said this before, the mm-hmm. more people that you have coming through and taking the energy, mm-hmm. while you can also give energy, I think that you're taking something every time that you come through that house. I, I just am concerned that it's not what it used to be. I agree, but also I think what I'm asking is, do you think that it's like got more evidence when more people are there? Even though I don't love when they're bigger groups, it seems like we got more when more people were there. I mean, they were upstairs, though. We were downstairs. Sure. We got more personal evidence versus like when there's that many people there, we couldn't get EVPs. We yeah, really I mean, gather. it's so true. That that part was definitely frustrating. It's but hard to say. But the vibes were different. Yeah. So do you think that it's all kind of... Maybe they added to... Centralized in the basement? I think so. I feel the most in the basement. Okay. I think there's a lot of activity that some people report in the nursery or the children's room. I haven't seen it. I haven't I experienced agree. it. I haven't felt it. We've definitely tried. So, yeah, but- I mean, until I do, I'm just kind of inclined to think... Um, there's just been a lot of people through here and it's kind of hyped up there and I haven't seen the hype yet. I would agree with that. Despite my insomnia that night and not being able to sleep, I, even with that, I was not creeped out. I did not feel nervous or scared or anything. I have felt uncomfortable places. I was not getting a vibe anywhere. First time around in the basement, I was unsettled. Yes. I will say that. Yeah. It's definitely different down there. So I'm kind of leaning towards the the basement is the scariest place. I think it's settled. Which is kind of interesting because if the legend of Sally is true, she wouldn't have been in the basement. Like I said, though, I'm, I'm here to say I don't think the spook, spoopy vibe is from Sally. Mm-mm. I, I really don't. What I do think, think I think it's whatever was brought to the house from darker stuff in the basement. From people. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've said it before and I'll say it a hundred times. I am very leery of child spirits. Mm -hmm. I think they are um, signs of something darker. Demonic forces. Yeah. Yeah. I would not disagree with that statement. They're meant to lure you and to get like a false sense of comfort. Yeah. Like, oh, it's just this kid. And like you kind of feel empathetic and you want to kind of help them in and help them. And once you get too comfortable, then that's when you end up in a situation where Mm -hmm. it's a a true haunting or a possession. Mm. And this is one of the few points that I will wholeheartedly agree with you on. (laughs) I think that demonic horses, their purpose is to trick and taunt. And what other, what does our society trust immediately? Children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I'm not like a huge believer in demonic Which presence. is weird because I am. We're the opposite. I know. <laughs> I believe in dark spirits. Right. But I don't know that I necessarily believe in demonic things. But yeah. I get what you're saying. I do. I do totally understand what you guys are both saying. So anyways, that is our Sally House. That was our Sally episode, House. Episode part two. And honestly, we would love to hear from you guys. I Like we said, we know Sally House is very famous. So yeah. I'm sure a lot of you have probably been there or heard of it or know someone who's been there. So send us your stories. Let us know. You can email us at thetipsyghost at gmail.com. We would just love to have things to compare it to. Yeah. You can also find us at thetipsyghost.com to find our socials from there. Please give us a five-star rating and a great review anywhere you listen to podcasts. We really appreciate it, and it really does help. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. We will catch you next week. All right, guys. I hate you. (laughs) Okay, Okay. bye. Okay, bye. Bye. (laughs) The worst.